Michigan, we did this for you. Donovan Edwards, racing to the end zone. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never ran to the no man. And he's loose again. Edwards, off and running. Welcome back, Donovan Edwards. Had a story. What story are these confetti pieces telling right now? George Corum is loose. Blake Corum down the sideline. Usher and slung down at the five. Go, 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 go. Today is the day I'm going to rank every single Michigan 2024 freshman from S tier to D tier. I'm pretty sure I'm going to offend somebody. But hey, man, you can't please everybody. Michigan, you deserve it. Michigan, you are king. And Michigan, these are your flowers. First up, we have a young man, a big man by the name of Andrew Sprague out of Missouri, Kansas. He's about 6'7", 285, 286-ish. He's in that range. Offensive tackle. Big boy. Real good boy. Real talented. Some of the things he does well. Number one, hey, man, he earned four stars here at BlindSidePro.com. Number two, he has a great frame at 6'7", 285. You can fill that frame up to at least 305 without losing any of that athleticism. He's a great fit for what Michigan wants to do and running in that run-first offense. Great, amazing fit. Uh, he's a dual-sport athlete at 6'7", 286. Best believe he's on that basketball court, and that athleticism shows up on the football field. It shows up a lot. Now, there are some things he needs to work on. I've got to give you some balance. There are some things he needs to work on. Number one, pass protection is the area of concern for me. Uh, but I think Michigan has the coaching staff with Sharon Moore there. I think they're going to do some amazing things with this young man. He will need to get up to at least 295, 300 pounds to push for one of those tackle spots as a true freshman or as a red shirt freshman, depending on what they do with him. Verdict. I believe Andrew Sprague is a really good B tier prospect. Um, has a lot. Of, I think he has the potential to be in those to be drafted in those first three rounds. Could go as high as the first round if he can develop into you know develop those uh, pass protection skills needed to be a solid left tackle. He has the athletic background. I believe he has the athletic background to do so. A six seven two eighty five athletic lineman. These guys don't just walk around and fall out of trees, so it's a lot to work with here. So we're going to slide Andrew Prague into a good old B tier. Jaden Davis, quarterback out of Providence Day High School in Charleston, North Carolina. About 6'1", 6 6'1", 6 201. One of the smaller quarterbacks in this class. Believe it or not, at one point, at one point, Jaden Davis was like the number two recruit in his class, right behind Dylan Riola and C.J. Cardinal, they was right there neck and neck around their sophomore season, but he, he did take a, a drop uh, in the boards. Uh, but he does, do, he does do a few things well. Number one, excellent on the rollout. Number two, good production, very productive quarterback with a high completion percentage. Number three, there ain't no number three. He has a high completion percentage. Uh, some of the things he need to work on, some of the things he need to work on, I didn't see a senior tape, so I can't really give a get a full gauge of his real ability today. I haven't seen any a senior highlight tape. I question the arm strength that time. He's a bit risky at the goal line with, at, with his decision making. It's a bit risky, and he tends to hold the ball for a very long time. Haven't seen him get the ball out on time like that. Just on film, you know, I don't know what the concept were, how long he's supposed to be. He passed that ball a long time. So we're going to slot him as a C-tier prospect. And, and, and if you don't know how I do my tiers, S-tier means elite FBS prospect. A-tier means a great FBS pro prospect. B-tier is a good tier. C-tier is average, and D-tier is developmental. All right, so we're going to slot Jaden Davis in as a C-tier prospect. Jordan Marshall, running back out of Archbishop. What's that? Mueller. Uh, high school in Cincinnati, Ohio. He's about 5'10", 5'11", 195, running back. Glows. I have a lot of glows for this young man, but I'm only going to give you five. Five. I'm only going to give you five. <laughs> one, number one, Juke Billy, uh, able to make two to three three guys miss every single play. Like, And he looks fluent when he does it. Good size, not the best size, but he has good size. Elusive, hard to bring down, and he has enough speed, enough speed to break the big one. Uh, and at, at least at the high school level, 
the first person rarely ever brings him down. You're gonna you gonna have to you gonna need all eleven to the football on this kid. Now, what concerns me about Jordan Marshall? Well, once again, no senior tape. So I, I re- and I really wanted, I really needed to see uh, Jordan Marshall's senior tape. Um, you know, I, and, and you know, it's not really a knock, but you know, I, I would like a full body of work. But I'm gonna go with my gut on this one. Uh, and the last thing he need to work on, just a second thing. I, you know, I can nitpick kids all day, but two things he need to work on. One, I wish I wish he can make a senior tape so I can watch it. Uh, and number two, uh, I question his hands out the backfield. Um, but final verdict. With all that being said, Jordan Marshall, the Jordan Marshall, or the Archbishop, 5'11", 195 pounds. He will be an S tier prospect. I love everything about this kid's tape. Uh, he, to me, Jordan Marshall is the beast mode of the 2024 class. Don't take my word for it. Y'all see these clips on the screen? Jordan Marshall is the beast mode of the 2024 class. I see a lot of Saquon and Marshawn Lynch when I watch his tape. Marshall is the total package from an inside runner to an outside runner. Uh, good size, but you know he would need to get up to at least. I would feel comfortable with him starting and contributing to the Michigan Wolverines at about two hundred five, maybe even two fifteen to really be in that that Marshawn Lynch Frank. I think Marshawn Lynch is about five eleven, two fifteen. Great ability to break tackles, attacks the hole, has the ability to to break front line tackles, second t- second level tackles, and he definitely run <laughs> running over DBs. So. I love everything about this kid at the high school level. Don't know what he'll do in college, but we shall see. If he is what I believe him to be, the boy may be a, a first-round top 10 pick. Next up, we have Hogan Hansen out of Bellevue, uh, Washington, 6'6", 220, tight end. Uh, some of the things I really liked about this kid, number one, he has great size, uh, balance between run and pass. He blocks, and he, he blocks, he blocks well. And he catches the ball at about the same ability. A uh, really good run blocker. I think he could be a little bit better of a receiver than uh, A.J. Barner that they currently have at Michigan, who's projected to be about a – they got A.J. Barner. He's projected to go as high as third potentially, but he can go as low as seven. So, you know, that on those third third through seven, it's, it's a, it's a pick-me. So, um, one thing he, he needs to work on, not enough film. I didn't. I didn't think. <clears throat> I didn't think he had enough film for what I'm looking for. Um, his film sample size was just super small. Doesn't really accelerate or excel in any one particular area. He's kind of like you know he's pretty even across the board. I don't really see the him being just so much better of a run blocker, so much better of a pass receiver. Uh, but he's good. But he doesn't really stand out in any one particular area to me. Um, so yeah, with that being said, he will be a C tier prospect right next to Jaden Davis. Uh, I really like the kid, but uh, I just think the sample size is just way too small. And I base all my assessments purely on game tape. So what you do on film is who you are to me. Don't care about your size. Don't care about your potential. Just care about you, (laughs) what you doing on film. Next up, we got Josiah Edmond from Norwood in Indianapolis. About 6'1", 180, real good, real good size. Uh, some of the things he does well, he attacks the football for picks. Like, I mean, his pick plays are like, mm, he he hitting that that high point. He taking it out the air, plays with good leverage when he's in when in trail technique and covering those receivers up. I'm not a DB guy, but I, I know a little bit about enough about him to make an assessment. Uh, some things I would like to see him improve, or something I didn't see him do on film a lot in his junior tape was tackle. I need to see you tackle more. I didn't see the pick six gene based on your 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 junior highlight tape. And the third one is he didn't have a senior tape for me to watch. I think he had senior film, but I wasn't about to go through all those different tapes. But, yeah, those are my glows and grows. With that being said, this was a tricky one for me uh, because he, to me, <clears throat> I'm putting him in the C tier, all right? But I, I was really, I, I'm really a tweener. I think he could be B. I think he can be a good prospect, but it's just it's tough, man. These you know he he's a tweener to me, man. He 
he's not a developmental guy. He can come in and play. He can probably come in and contribute. Um, probably not a starter right now. But in a year or two, he can be a B-tier prospect. But by his sophomore year, I think he's going to be in that a C-tier, uh, above-average corner. Next up, we have a Lou Guard, uh, Edo Pay. Edo, Edo Pay. Edo Pay? Edo Pay? Uh, out of Bishop McNard, McNarmiri? I don't know. Bishop High School in Maryland, 6'6", 230. Like, do you, 6'6", 230? 6'6", Like, that is amazing size for a defensive end. You can easily bulk him up to about 245 if you want to and keep that speed. Uh, one thing that I, like, really love, like, the one thing that stood out to me as I was watching this film was this dude has an amazing first step. Like, his get-off is absolutely crazy. This dude has long arms. I mean, his arms are so <laughs> – this dude's arms are so long. He can tie his shoes standing up. He only had to bend down and slouch over, and he could just tie him standing. He got some long arms, and he, his go-to move from what I saw uh, the film I watched was the, the swim move. Uh, some of the, the glows, or grows, I should say, areas of improvement that I would like to see uh, or concerns for me when I watched his tape was many of his best plays were when he was unblocked. At the college level, you're going to have to be able to shed blocks to be a consistent threat on the edge on the inside, wherever you at. You're going to have to shed those blocks to make a living. And uh, he didn't have any senior tape. Well, he had some senior. He had like a mid seat, like a first three games or something like that, but didn't see enough there. Um, before I get my verdict, this prospect in particular, if he put it all together, he could easily be a S tier. He could easily be one of the best recruits to come out of Michigan. He could be. He could be, but he's a bit inconsistent, great athlete, everything like that. So with this is another kid that I kind of I'm fly, waffling over, but he's a C tier with B tier potential, if that makes sense. But you know, if I gotta pick one, I'm gonna go C until he can develop a little bit more. Good news is he's at Michigan. He don't have to play right away. Um, I know we we trying to push all these boys into the portal, but I think if he sits and develops at Michigan for about a year or two, Michigan is going to have a heck of a pass rush on their heads, man. Like, watch the tape. The boy got the boy got juice. He's just inconsistent. He needs to be polished up a little bit. So right now he's going into that average tier. Really wanted to put him in the B tier based on the his initial his first couple of plays on his highlight tape is just like Straight juice, man, but it, it falls it falls flat after, after a couple plays. Uh, that consistency just isn't there for me to be B, A, or S tier. Uh, so, yeah, C tier prospect, a lot of potential here. I think he has the highest ceiling of anybody we about to go over today. <laughs> I think he has the highest ceiling, but he's going that, that C tier today. Next up, we have Devon Baxter, another defensive end, another edge rusher who's 6'5", 225, out of Gwen Park in Maryland. Uh, good size, solid production. You know, I think he's another developmental – I think he is a developmental prospect. Um, he's going to the D tier. I think he needs to work on a few things. I don't think <clears> – and watching grading these two and evaluating these two back-to-back -back, uh, was difficult because on one hand we have Devon Baxter – who is a little bit more polished, I think, um, as a rusher and a run defender than, than Lugard. But Lugard has a much, much higher ceiling. I don't think – I think potentially Lugard will probably win out this battle. Um, so I'm going to uh, – I don't know it's close, man. It's really close here. Real close. But I'm going to slide him in that detail. I'm going to take the L. I know some people are going to be mad, but it is what it is. Next up, we have Brady Presscorn. Tight end. I really like this tight end. I like him. I like this tight end a lot. <laughs> He's 6'6", 225. Let's put, hold on. Let's stop for a second. Michigan, where are y'all finding all these 6'6", six, six plus tackles, 6'6", six, six plus defensive end? Like, y'all got 6'6", six, six everywhere. <laughs> like, what are they, do they grow on trees? But we got Brady uh, Presscorn, 
6'6", 225, tight end out of Michigan, hometown kid. I think he is the best receiver in this class. Even with the other receivers in this class, I think he's the best receiver in this class. Has a great release. Really nice deep route. Uh, he's a hand catcher, soft hands, real soft hands, hand catcher. He can high point the football. He he is, and even though he's only two twenty five on paper, that boy can roll great. He can he can move some furniture up there. He can move a little furniture now. He can move as he can move a lot of furniture. I really like him as a run blocker. Uh, and he looks he looks actually looks fast on film. Like he looks like he could be one the next great tight end to come out of the college football ranks. Uh, I'm not saying he's gonna be Brock, but I'm just saying he's gonna be one of the good ones um, in a couple of years. So keep it, keep. You heard, hey, listen, man. Hey, listen. You heard it here first. Brady uh, Press Corner is gonna be one of the great tight ends in college football, and if he is, he going to the league, and it ain't no question. Uh, some things need to work on. He needs to add some serious weight. What you did in high school don't matter in college. You that two twenty, two twenty, two fifteen. You probably carried in high school. You got to get up to about two forty, two fifty. At least 240. At least got to meet Brock where he was at. He got to at least be 240. You got to at least get 240, okay? At least you had 240. Um, would like to see you more run more routes. Uh, his highlight tape is heavy on the post route. He runs a lot of deep posts. And he, I mean, he, and he runs a beautiful deep post. Like, it's beautiful. Like, like, watch his tape. Like, he runs a beautiful deep post route. And I would like to see him run the ball more. His uh, run block more. Small sample size for the run game. Small, simple size for running a variety of uh, route concepts. But the talent is there, so we're sliding Brady Press Corn into the S tier. Uh, yes, I have a, him rated higher than Hogan Hansen, even though he's Hogan Hansen is rated a tier uh, four stars or whatever, a little bit higher. I think Press Corn is, is just that much better than Hogarth or Hogan uh, coming out of high school. And this kid we got coming up is a bad boy. A bad, bad man by the name of Blake Frazier out of Vandergriff or Vandergriff uh, High School in Austin, Texas. 6'5". Uh, they have him listed at 260, but I believe he's a little closer to 285 right now. I, I would like to believe he's at 285. Um, I ain't going to give a bunch of glows because I just – I've already – <laughs> evaluate this man film. I actually got a great senior tape. But for his junior tape, he earned five stars here with me at blindsidepro.com, earned the 85 or better. As much, and, and to earn the 85 or better with me is rare. I have like probably 15, 20 kids in the last four years to go 85 or better, maybe 30. I maybe got 30 kids in the last five years, four years, three years that have scored an 85 or better on my assessment. Um, and he and, I, and honestly, Blake Frazier is a great pass blocker. Under he's an underrated pass blocker. I don't think enough people talk about him at all, and they definitely aren't talking about his ability to protect that that uh, blind side of the quarterback. So it ain't no secret, man. Right here, we we sliding uh, Blake Frazier in the S tier. Uh, he will be the next great Michigan offensive tackle. Uh, you heard it here first. I'm saying it. I'm standing on it. Y'all know I stand on everything I say. Whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong, he will be the next great Michigan <laughs> offensive tackle. Like I said before, I have not officially graded his senior tape, but I looked at it. I watched it a couple times, and as much as I loved his junior tape, this senior tape is going even crazier. Um, the eye test was crazy. He's gonna. He probably gonna clearly. He's probably gonna clear a ninety. Probably. I hope he cleared it. I ain't going to get it to him, but I hope he cleared it. Um, and it's like he's way better. So, Michigan, y'all hitting it out the park so far. I think your class is super duper underrated. Next up, we have Jeremiah Beasley. He's a running back linebacker out of Belleville in Michigan. Hometown kid. To me, he's developmental to me. I think the potential is there. I see why he was rated where he's rated athletically. I don't think the production there is there on the offense or defense side of the ball. Uh, so he's a developmental tier. He's fast, good size, all that. But is he ready to play right now out the box? I personally don't think so. But, hey, man, I'm not in that room. I'm not in that locker room. I don't think he's ready to play right now out the box. But, hey, man, give him two, three years. Let him cook a little bit. Let him, let him cook in that oven a little bit more. You could have a player on your hands. Next up, 
We have Jacob Oden, receiver, 6'1", 188. Well, I guess he listed as a athlete. Um, when you watch his tape, I don't really know what a, you know, where you would place him. Uh, when you when I watched his tape, it didn't see a whole lot. Just to be honest with you, uh, outside of him having great size, didn't see a lot of traits that translated to C, B, or A, or even S tier. So he's a D tier developmental prospect. Could bloom, could be a late bloomer. Um, but as far as high school production in comparison to his grade level peers. I got to put him in a developmental tier. I got to be honest. I just got to put him in a developmental tier. Next up, we have Channing Goodwin out of Providence. They play with uh, Jaden Davis, 6'1", 180 receiver. Uh, you know, flash potential here or there, but I think he's a average receiver. He could, like I said, he could bloom into something better than average, but out the box, I don't think he got it right now. I think he needs to develop a little bit more, and that's fine. It's absolutely fine. We got to stop telling these kids that they ready to go right now. Even my S-tier guys, do I think they ready to go right now? Uh, yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> but <laughs> I do think my S-tier, I think my S-tier, A-tier, and B-tier guys could could push for a starting role as a true freshman or even as a redshirt freshman. But I'm not saying they're perfect. I'm just saying they their ability is that good that I think they could push for one of those positions. Um, but I don't think Channing Goodwin – Good one is that yet, but he could be. Mason <laughs> Curtis. Oh, how I loathe you. <laughs> I really want to like Mason Curtis. And let me tell you why. Mason Curtis is a slash guy to me. He's a 6'4", 200-pound linebacker, slate safety, nickel. He, he's a slash. He's not... It's, ooh, it's so interesting. Like he, he's interesting, man. Like when I, I and I, I think I spent the most time, like just watching his tape. I'm like, bro, what am I looking at? It's like it's interesting, man. It's, the, oh, it's just he's such an interesting prospect. Uh, he's six four, two hundred, listed as a outside linebacker, but he plays the free safety role. He's He's not fast enough to play safety, but he's not slow. He's not a slow linebacker. He's not fast enough to play safety. He's not physical enough. At least I didn't see a whole bunch of run plays or run defense outside of scooping up a fumble recovery. I didn't see a whole lot of him taking on blocks <laughs> as a weak side or strong side linebacker. So I don't know if he's fast enough to play free. Uh, he has the ball skills to play free safety. I don't know if he has the athletic ability to play free safety. Um, he has the skill set to play linebacker in the passing game, but I don't know what he's going to give us in the run game. So he's a really <laughs> interesting prospect for sure. Great ball skill, average physical ability, great size. He's not the fastest, but he's not the slowest. <laughs> um, but he's not physical enough to play linebacker, in my opinion, to bang in there with those big boys in, in the FBS. Uh, his sets will be heavily dependent, <laughs> heavily dependent on how Michigan develops him and where they, where they truly see him at in the next couple of years. So with that being said, what's his name? Mason Curtis, you are going into the S tier. Um, B tier potential, man, for sure. But I just, I don't, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Uh, a lot of pick sixes and picks. And he, he has an amazing, but I think he plays tight end too. So he looks like a tight end playing free safety, if that makes sense. He looks like a tight end playing free safety, <laughs> uh, which is not a bad thing. But, like, he, you know, I don't know if he's a true free safety. But I do like him a lot. I do like him a lot. We got Luke Hamilton. Out of uh, Ohio, six five two nine. That is like when I picture a high school freshman or a college freshman, I picture six five two ninety offensive tackle. Like that's what that's what I want. I don't really care about the six eight guy. I don't care about the six eight three hundred fifty pound. Off I don't care about those guys. Don't care about them. Give me when I envision <laughs> a freshman college offensive tackle. 
ideal size. I, I picture 6'5", 290. I picture 6'5", 290. Um, but outside of having a great frame, I think I think Luke has a lot to work on. Motor, physicalness, pass pro, across. I think just need he just he needs to be developed. And if they can develop this guy, whew, whew, he can be something nasty. But as of right now, I think he's a developmental tier. Jake uh, Gualer, I don't know how to say his name. But we got Jake G, Jake G out of Florida, 6'4", interior offensive lineman, uh, great frame. I think he's a tier above Luke Campbell. Uh, I think he'll be an average player, average offensive lineman, interior guard. Uh, could crack a starting lineup, may not, don't know. But in relation to his peers, and I watch a lot of offensive and defensive line, and I watch a lot of tape, period. But mainly them trenches, O-line, D-line, linebackers, and tight ends. That's all I deal with. I got I got, I got, got some safeties, too. I ain't going to lie. I done graded a couple safeties. I done graded a few safeties and linebackers. Um, but usually we deal with O-line, D-line, linebackers, and tight ends. And, uh, and a sprinkle of safeties that I believe are linebacker conversion prospects. Um but yeah, I think Jake is a C tier prospect. I think he's gonna be solid. 6'4, 290. Can't argue there. Uh Sharon Moore is probably the best, or well, at least top five in college football as far as developing offensive linemen, identifying offensive linemen that he can develop into studs later. And I think I think at 6'4, 290, uh, based on his tape, I think he's one of those guys that he could he, he could easily push, but he's gonna have to work for it. Imari Stewart out of Chicago, 5'9", 180. Potential there, a little bit of a speedster, not a whole lot of production to me as far as traits and things like that. So I'm going to slot him in as a C-tier receiver. Could, you know, need C-tiers, can, they can develop into anything, man, honestly. But coming out of high school, I think he's, a, he's going to be an average FBS receiver. So I am in post production right now, working on <laughs> editing the video. And the more I'm watching Imarion Stewart's tape, I think I may have got this one wrong. I think he's most most likely going to be a B tier. If I had to, if I had the opportunity to redo it, he'd probably be a B tier. So Imarion uh, Stewart, forgive me, bro. <laughs> um, after watching a little bit more film, I think you possess some B tier qualities. Um, good. Good route running, uh, love the route running, love the ability to get open, uh, good speed, high point in the football. Really don't know what, you know, ugh. hey, man, B tier. Uh, that's on me. Uh, appreciate it. Next, uh, I've been waiting to get to this guy for the longest. <laughs> Owen Waffle. I believe that's how you say his name is Waffle with just one L. Is he the Waffle or Waffle? I don't know. But. Out of New Jersey, 6'1", 290-pound, edge rusher. Let that sink in for this for a second. Owen Waffle at 6'1", 290 pounds, is listed as an edge rusher. Let me say that one more time. <laughs> Owen Waffle at 6'1", 290 pounds, is listed as as a edge rusher, when I was pre-screening this group, just looking at the sizes and positions, I had them circle. I said, why is a 6'1", 290-pound defensive lineman listed as an edge rusher? Is he, is he that athletic to play on the edge? Is he? So I couldn't wait to get to his tape just so I can see if, if what I thought was true and – and who he could potentially be at 6'1", 290. I said, I ain't going to put that name out there. I'm going to let y'all do it. Y'all let me know. Y'all let me know who y'all think he, who who y'all think I think he could be based on what you see on tape, based on his size, based on his physical traits. Y'all let me know. <laughs> All right. So listed as an edge rusher at 6'1", 290 pounds, piqued my interest. And <laughs> I definitely see why they listed him as an edge rusher. Has an amazing get-off, plays with great leverage, acceleration, with a high freaking motor. 
very well put together physically. At 6'1", 290, he doesn't look sloppy. He looks like a very well-built individual. I like he works out pretty well. Uh, very well put together frame. Uh, you know, just looking at the eye test. Uh, I think he's under, I think he's extremely, extremely undervalued in the 2024 class. And I think Michigan hit this prospect out the park. I think Owen Waffle could be one of those three-star recruits that defies the odds and pushes past some of these five stars in his college career. Uh, and with that being said, we're going to slide him as an A tier. All right, I, I couldn't I couldn't do elite, um, but he's going to be a great player, <laughs> a really great player. Could even be a a a second. Even maybe even sneak into that first round. Honestly, if he if he if he keep, continues his development and continues his trajectory with that with those coaches they have in Michigan with that training program, this kid could be nasty. I mean, he's nasty right now coming out of high school. He's going to be something special for Michigan. <laughs> like I hate to say it, because I'm a Georgia boy. I'm always be a Georgia boy, but it's about Michigan, and I gotta get them their flowers, cause. I like Owen Waffle, and he's, I think he only had like 14 offers. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Why? How? How? <laughs> How did this dude only have like 14 offers? Like, that's crazy. So I think Owen Waffle is going to be something special for Michigan. Like, I really do. Very undervalued. Um, um, I don't think a lot of people are talking about him, honestly. And um, yeah, man, I'm, he, he's earned a, a 18. And I haven't even graded his tape. I'm going to grade it. He gonna be on BlindSidePro.com. Don't know where he gonna fall. He could be in that. I think he gonna be in that eighty-three to ninety. He could. He could go as high as ninety. I don't know. I gotta grade it. I gotta see what he does over the course of twenty plays. But I'm liking what I saw, man. I really do. We got Ted Hammond um, out of Cincinnati, Ohio, six five, two fifty-eight, defensive line. He's a power player. Um, I saw. I kind of see shades. Of Aiden Hutchinson, but he's he's not he's not he's he's not he's not Aiden Hutchinson. But I see shades of if you watch Aiden Hutchinson's high, senior highlight tape, like that dude's going crazy. But I see shades of Aiden Hutchinson. Like I can see why they picked him up. He's very raw. He's a very very raw defensive lineman. I don't know if he's a, at six five two sixty. Do you bulk him up and let him play that three technique? Maybe in, in that one technique. Do you trim him down a little bit and let him rush off the edge? I don't see edge rusher. I see three tech, two eye, uh, four eye. I see an interior uh, run stopper. I see an interior run stopper pass rusher. I don't see he's not going to be an Aiden Hutchinson, but I, I see shade. I see a glimpse. I see I see a little bit. <laughs> I see a little bit of Aiden Hutchinson at, at Michigan. I'm not the biggest fan of Aiden Hutchinson in the in the pros, but. At Michigan, Aiden Hutchinson was all that. I'm telling you. I think I see some shades. But he's going to have to sit maybe for a year or two, uh, maybe three, um, and, and develop a little bit. But he he could be a real, real player. Um, he could be a real player for sure. I think Dominique Nichols at 6'5", 252, edge rusher. He's a legitimate defensive end, outside linebacker. I think he is the best edge rusher in the 2024 class for Michigan specifically. In comparison to these other two guys, I think he's just – he's a tad – Lugard <coughs> – Lugard here, right here. Where my other defensive end at? Lugard – I can't find him. I think these three right here. No, here we go down here. Here we go. Lugard – I think Lugar has him a tad bit in just pure athleticism, but I think uh, Nichols has a much better motor, um, a little bit more polished, a little bit more ready to play right now. He'll probably see the field before Lugar, but I think Lugar, if he takes the coaching at Michigan, that he will uh, eventually be a starter if he can take the coaching and you know round off his technique a little bit. And I think Dominique is a B tier uh, prospect. I think if, even I even think if I graded his film, he would probably grade out as a a low B. Um, I think because Andrew Sprague graded out like an 82, 83. I actually have Andrew Sprague rated the highest rated top out of the linemen in the top ten. 
top 10 offensive linemen in 2024. Aiden Sprague has graded out the highest of those top 10 linemen. So do with that as you will. Um, and I think uh, Dominique Nichols will probably be in that, that low B tier as well as far as grade. Um, so interesting. He's a real interesting prospect. Next, we got Micah Campania. <laughs> Campana? Camp- I, y'all know I can't say anybody's name. Can't pronounce anybody's name right. Uh, out of Nevada, 5'11", 195, running back. Main thing I wrote down in my notes was the boy can run, the boy fast. All right, so to me, he's in that C tier, B tier. I really, I really, I really want to put this dude in the B tier. And I may leave him at the B tier because I, I see the, I see the, I see, I see it. It's just, ah. Uh, and I see it. I think I see the I see the production. I see the talent. I don't think he's going to be an average running back. I think he's going to be an above average running back. I don't think he's going to be the best. He could be, but just you know, I think he's going to be a a really productive running back for Michigan. I think I'm gonna leave him at the B tier. I think I, I think I'm I think I'm fine with that. And y'all let me know in the comments, but. I think I'm fine with him being the B tier. I don't. I kind of, I kind of waffle with this one a little bit, but I think he's a B tier kind of guy. Ooh, we got Jaden Smith. I like Jaden Smith. Six three, two hundred five, outside linebacker. Um, not the biggest. He gonna have to put on a little bit of weight. At least get up to about two fifteen to really, you know, you know, you don't have to. It's, it's a different game, but I think for his protection, for his production. I think he needs to get up to at least 215. Um, super twitchy, super fast, elusive. Uh, I think he can be a really good, a really good linebacker, a uh, pass rusher, run stopper. You know, I think he's going to, I think he could be a really good player. I think he could be. I really do. Um, and I, I feel real comfortable with him being um, a B-tier prospect. I mean, we want, I'm like, like y'all see these plays, like, buddy, like he can, who gon' who can can't he like MC Hammer, man, can't touch this, like nobody can get a hand on this dude. I like him, I think you'll love him. Manuel Bagel, six four two eighty. They have him listed as a defensive lineman on twenty four seven Sports, but I think he's more of a. I think he's he's actually his film it says he's an offensive lineman. Um, so solid tape. Um, I think he's a developmental average to average player. Um, I think it's going to be hard for him to get on the field at Michigan. I honestly just think it's going to be real difficult for him to see the field with Michigan. I mean, he's already in the class with Blake Frazier and Andrew Sprague. They picked up Amir Herring last year. They already have a really good offensive line anyway. I don't, it's going to be really, it's just hard for me to see. I just don't think he's going to see the field at Michigan. I think he would have signed somewhere else. He probably would have seen the field sooner. But, hey, man, it's just me. It's just me, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But solid prospect. He's a C-tier. He's a tweener, man. He's not B, A, or S, you know, not in my opinion. He's in the, the average to to developmental tier. I think I'm going to slot him in developmental. I think he needs some work. I think he needs some some polishing to be an effective uh, offensive lineman at that level. And uh, we'll see. Next, we got uh, Ben Robux. Not Roblox, but Robux. A Robux. Um, out of Ohio, 6'7", 320. A uh, little bit heavy for me. I think coming in, I think he's a little bit, a tad bit of weight um, at that weight. But at 6'7", he can hold it. Uh, I would probably trim him down a tad, you know, trim him down about 215. I mean, not 215, but 315 to 310. Um, Then, you know, add some more muscle, lean muscle to him as needed. Uh, Great size, has some nastiness to him. Uh, I think he'll be a solid player overall. But once again, I don't see five offensive linemen starting from this class. I just don't see it. I can see Blake. I can definitely see Blake Frazier getting the start in a couple. If if not this year, depending on the depth chart, he'll definitely push for one of those those starting spots uh, in the by his sophomore year. If not his red shirt freshman year, um, 
Spray can see the field. I just see I don't see five linemen coming out of this class starting. I just don't see it. Not offensive linemen. So uh he may, you know, I think a lot of these these C tier linemen are gonna end up transferring anyway. Honestly, I just think they're gonna transfer somewhere they can get on the field. They can play, they just I don't see them cracking that lineup for Michigan. I just don't see it. Next up, <laughs> Michigan is Michigan is recruiting some um some pretty interesting defensive line prospects. Like they're real heavy on the offensive and defensive line. Not in weight, but in numbers. Um, David, I think it's David, David Pale Pale, or David Pale. I think it's David. I'm gonna say David. David Pale Pale out of Pennsylvania at 6'3, uh, 305 pounds, 305. Uh, I think to me, when as I watched his tape. To me, he gave me more of a, and this is no shot at at Pale Pale. It's just to me, he gave me like a, a, a poor man's Jalen Carter, like, and that's a compliment. He's not Jalen Carter. He's going he's he's going to be Pale Pale at the end of the day. He's going to be the best Pale Pale he can be. But just to give you kind of a a comp, a, comp, a, a relatively recent comp, I think he he reminds me a lot of a poor man's. Jalen Carter, and that's an extreme compliment. It's not a diss. It's a compliment. I think he's going to be a good player. A uh, remarkable ability to rush from the, the five technique at 6'3", 305. He can rush from the five technique very well. Uh, I think he'll naturally find a home inside H- with him and uh, what's this boy's name? And Waffle. Him and Waffle inside is going to be something nasty in the next couple of years. They're going to be a great one-two punch inside. They both see the field. Uh, but, man, I think he's going to be a good one. I, I, he's a B-tier prospect for me. Jack Luke Lugwig. Wig, Zach Lugwig, linebacker, 6'3", 202. Uh, one off. His only offer was Michigan. Um, didn't see a whole lot on film. I think he's a developmental player. Um, I just – didn't see a lot there. Uh, next, we have uh, Jeremiah Lowe, cornerback, uh, CB tier kind of player, in my humble opinion. But I'm going to have to slide him in the C tier. I think he's going to be a, a average player, uh, a average corner. I don't think you know he could. Like I say, any of these guys could could blow up and be the next whatever. But out of high school, as they currently constructed. I believe he's a C tier prospect. Now, the last guy I want to talk about, and when I was grading, when I was going through the, the list, and I was tired, but I don't got it's like twenty seven of these dudes. They all they highlight tapes like five ten minutes long. <laughs> I had to rewatch it over and over again just to kind of get a a better grasp of what 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 their ability is coming out of high school, and. Jeremiah Lowe, not Jeremiah Lowe, and Cole Sullivan shocked me. He was a, a breath of fresh air. He was unexpected. Um, linebacker, 6'3", 200 pounds. He looks bigger than 200 pounds. I got to be honest. He don't look 200 pounds on film. He looked more like he's 215. Uh, he looked like he's more like 210, but he doesn't look 200 pounds on film. Uh this man can fit, and who the way this man fill an, can fill an A gap, he may be the best tackler in the Michigan 2024 class, hands down. I think he is going to be a future starter. I think he's a underrated, another one of those underrated three star prospect that Michigan found um, out of Pennsylvania. And I believe he's an A tier prospect. So I think um, Cole Sullivan is a top five player. In this Michigan 2024 recruiting class, I feel real strongly about that. Um, and um, I think they, I think Michigan, I think this class is very, very underrated. Uh, they don't have any five stars signed, but they got some really good four stars. And they have some three stars that I think are better than some of the four or five stars on other people on higher ranked boards 